In other words, he wants to make the church so healthy and so wealthy that even the Jews would envy us. The problem is this. Most of the Jews outside of Israel are wealthier than just about anybody else. You've got the Spielbergs and the, and, and the Mayers and the Goldwins and, 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 and the Rothschild. And, well, these are Jews. And they're some of the wealthiest people in the world. And God says, I want them to envy you. Now imagine how much God needs to make you wealthy so that they will envy you. Our problem is our minds are so small. We have a hard time even thinking whether we will have enough for next week. When God wants you to lay up enough for your great-great-grandchildren. We think so small. We think only as far as our noses. And if your nose is not long, then it's not very far. <laughs> See? We need to go beyond our needs and start thinking of others. You know, I've come to realize something. The more you think of your needs, the more preoccupied you are about your needs, the less they seem to be met. But if you start thinking of the needs of others first and help meet those needs, You'll find out yours will be met. See? Because God doesn't want us to be selfish. He already said, why do you worry about these things? The pagans worry about this. Don't worry about what you will eat, what you will drink, and what you will wear. Don't worry about those things. Amen? Amen. God is good. Amen? Amen? The patriarchs became the first fruits as a precedent to the salvation of of all Israel. Now, let me show you one more. In Jeremiah 2 3, Israel was holy to the Lord, the first fruits of his harvest, meaning God's harvest. All who devoured her were held guilty, and disaster overtook them, declares the Lord. Israel is a first fruits. Israel is a nation, it's a first fruits. A first fruits nation. What does that mean? That means Israel is the first nation he will save and then he saves the nations of this world. It's only the first fruits. It, it is the first fruits of among the nations that God has called. That's why you'll notice when you read the Bible, in Romans you'll see it a lot, to the Jew first and then to the Gentiles. See, they're the first fruits. If I'm going to do it for the Jews, I'm going to do it for you. That's what he's saying. If I'm going to save all of Israel, I'm going to save all the nations. That's what he's saying. It speaks, of a, it speaks of a deliverance. That, let, let me show you another one. It, it'll bring my point home. James 1.18. Watch this. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits. Of his creatures. Now watch, huh? watch this. Of his own will, he brought us, the believers. Remember, we are a new creation in Christ, right? Second Corinthians 5 says that if any man be in Christ, he is what? A new creation. The word creation there literally means species. We are a new species. There is no one on earth like you. You are the only one, if you are a believer in Christ, born again by the Spirit of God, you are the only one in the planet that has God's nature. Nobody else does. The unbelievers don't have that. Only those who have faith in Christ. And that makes you a completely different creature on this planet. He brought you forth. This is not of your own will and your own choice. He brought you forth, He brought us forth by the word of truth so that we might be the first fruits, a kind of first fruits. What's He saying here? Look at the principle. A kind of first fruits of His creation, His creatures. In other words, you are no longer a sinner. Oh, you might sin from time to time, but your identity is saint.
The Bible calls you holy ones. We sometimes use the word saint. That's what the Bible calls you. If you keep on thinking that you're a sinner, guess what? As a man thinketh in his heart, you're going to behave like a sinner. You got to stop thinking that way. That's why you need to renew your mind and start thinking like God, the thoughts of God, so that you start acting like God. Of course, we know we'll never be God. That position is closed. Three, a committee of three, and that's it. No one can apply. Okay, so kung meron kayong ambisyon, mag-apply, maging Diyos. It's not gonna work, okay? Your, applica your application will be turned down. It doesn't matter how impressive your resume is. Okay? You'll never be God, but you can be like Him. And that's what He wants. That's what it means to be godly or godlike means like God. See? And so that's why he calls it His creatures, after His image and His likeness. Now watch. We put this beside another passage in Romans, and it says, 8, 19 to 21, For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. What is hope again? Hope is a confident expectation of good. Right? So that's what it is. He subjected it in a confident expectation of good because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Now, a lot of people think this is going to happen when you get to heaven. No. Look, the whole world is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Not heaven. Heaven is not waiting for it. The earth is. And what this speaks about is that there is a time coming, and even now is, when you and I are going to be delivered from the corruption of this earth. You know what the corruption of this earth is like? It's called disease. It's called sickness. It's called depression. It's called invalid. It's called poverty. That's the corruption of this world. And he says, we have become a kind of first fruits of his creatures or his creation. So now the whole earth eagerly awaits for the manifestation of that son. You know what it's really waiting for? It's waiting for revelation. The reason why the sons of God are not manifesting is because of a lack of knowledge. We don't know who we are. Or we have forgotten who we are. Remember, James said in chapter 1 that we are like the, 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 the hearer and not the doer. It's like the one who looks at a mirror and then turns away and forget what, forgets what he looks like. The Word of God is a mirror reflecting who you are. When the Bible says you can do all things when the, uh, through Christ who gives you strength. When the Bible says you are the righteousness, not will be, but are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. When the Bible says that you have been saved by the blood of the Lamb. When the Bible says that you have been made rich through His poverty. See, it's waiting for us to receive that revelation so that you and I can manifest ourselves here on earth, not in heaven. Heaven doesn't need your wealth. You need that wealth now. There is a dying world that is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. But you know what? We are living like sons of men. Because we are thinking like, as the Bible says in Galatians chapter 3, like mere men. Parang tao lang. You are not homo sapien. You are homo deum. You are once again Christ in you. You are not the Christ, but Christ in you. He said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. You shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Just do it. Do it. And start manifesting. Turn to your neighbor right now and just say, start manifesting. <laughs> Amen? See, you need to start manifesting. The initial believers, that's the first century church, became the first fruits to the entire creation and this is a promise of the deliverance from earthly corruption. 